so hello everyone again and welcome to my channel so this will be a continuation from our previous video where we looked at hypervalent iodine chemistry now this is the part two and here we're going to be looking at another case where you can actually apply this particular chemistry in various reactions now in here we have this particular compound over here and we are aid or we need to be able to transform this into that something quite interesting that we need to know in here is that there's a kind of a change in the connection of the bonds over here switching from here to there and now you're going from here to this particular point over here with the inclusion of this particular group over here so let's look at the various reagents that we can include in this particular reaction to make this process happen now one reagent that you can use is iodine attached to a benzene group over here and on the other side of the aisle we need this particular reagent as well that and another reagent you can also include in this particular process is that over here and lastly we need a solvent for this process to happen and this solvent we're going to use here is methanol because methanol is quite cheaper and uh, less expensive overall so it's quite impressive how we're going to be using this as our solvent in this process and these are the reagents that will be used in the reaction over here so the mechanism will be focusing on the key players involved in the making of a particular reagent over here so one of the key players include number one number two number three so for number one number one is the iodide itself with the benzene group attached to it and its lone pairs and now when this reacts with number two what happens then is that this lone pair <coughs> sorry attacks this oxygen over here and this what happens then is that this body pair becomes a lone pair on this oxygen thereby making or generating a negative charge on this particular oxygen now what is being formed is the generation of a positive charge on the iodide due to the loss of its electrons or its lone pair however you're forming hydroxy attachment on the particular iodide and on the other side we have a negative charge on the oxygen here and this sulfur is attached to the oxygen over here all this remains unchanged overall just focus more on the lone pairs on this particular oxygen because it needs to be able to extract this particular hydrogen over there and what happens then is that you form a double bond between the iodide and oxygen so this process makes this hydrogen to have or generate this hypervalent nature and enable this particular reaction to be effective overall what you get in this particular process is double bond on the oxygen iodide remaining intact overall and then you have this coming off as that now once you form this what happens next is that number three comes into play and what number three does is quite fascinating overall and what happens then is that there's a lone pair on this particular nitrogen over here so this lone pair first attacks iodide over here and then this pi bond over here then moves over to oxygen and the lone pair on this particular oxygen then attacks or removes first to a hydrogen over there so let me just expand this for you to be able to see what is going on over there so in here you have that over there so in here what you get is as this lone pair is being lost 
and this pi bond is being lost as well to form a lone pair on the oxygen. Oxygen having its lone pair attacks hydrogen over here and then this bonding pair becomes a lone pair on the nitrogen. So that is just a zoom in of what is happening over there. And what happens as a result of that is the formation of this particular compound over here. Yep. So that is about it for there over for now. And now what happens next is that you form a double bond over here generating a positive charge on this nitrogen and then this lone this particular double bond which is the pi bond becomes a lone pair on the oxygen to form a negative charge on the oxygen so what you get as a result of this process is that over here so one of the most interesting thing about this particular process now is that there's a kind of a rearrangement process and this rearrangement process is called a Hoffman rearrangement. So Hoffman rearrangement occurs here and what happens in this particular process or how this happens is that this lone pair on the oxygen forms a pi system over here and now this pi bond over here then triggers the breaking of this particular bond by its fusing with nitrogen and then what happens then is that this particular bond is being cleaved off by it forming lone pairs on the iodine over there so what you get in this particular process is the formation of an interesting intermediate over here and then you don't forget that there is a particular solvent which is methanol over there and what happens then is that the oxygen which has a lone pair then attacks the carbon over here and then you form a negative charge on the oxygen and what results from this particular process is the formation of a negative charge on the oxygen the carbon attached to the LME actually it's an E over there with a positive charge on it and on the other side you also have don't forget over here there's a positive charge as well on the nitrogen Nitrogen also has a positive charge and then cleaves to a uh, fuses to a hydrogen, and you have another bond which then connects it to this particular methyl group over there. So, due to the presence of all this methanol over here, methanol comes in, another methanol which is a solvent comes in, and then the prod needs this particular compound over here and then forms a lone pair on the oxygen over there and then this particular negative charged oxygen then reforms a double bond over here and this double bond then moves back to this nitrogen to form a lone pair and then making this here to become a neutral species over here and then what you get as a result of this particular process is a formation of a desired product so this is our desired product over here and the desired product is gotten from this is it over there that's a desired product and our reagent which we have over here is actually species 3 over there so first of all you need to be able to transform this particular compound to make it activating at some point and by activating this species over here 
then by including this over in this particular process in the presence of ethanol then you can do this wonderful pushing arrows here and there that leads to the formation of the final product over there well, anyways guys thanks again for following me through this possible process i truly appreciate it if you like it please give it a big thumbs up subscribe and share with everyone around you have a good day guys peace love you all and be smart